Tesla stock is down 70% from the highs and you're probably wondering is now the time to get in and grab the stock for the biggest discount in history. Inside this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know to be prepared for Tesla in the next 12 months. And I will be giving you my best trading strategies for the stock that is ultra tradable. This is the best stock to trade in history, period end of story. Let's get right into it. Subscribe and like if you want to get trading content for the next 365 in 2023. Let's go. So as you can see right here, here's the stock. We'll be getting right into it very soon. But what we're talking about today is number one, how to trade the stock because it's very volatile and that volatility can be the death of traders, which I see happen all the time. This one stock takes out traders more than any other stock on the market. But if you know how to trade it correctly, it can be the opposite. It can take you to the moon. Lastly, when to buy this stock. We'll be talking about the fundamentals. How do you analyze this stock? How do you understand you know, what's going to be happening over the next couple of years to properly prepare for the bottom? If this isn't the bottom, when is it coming in? We're going to dive into that. First things first, when to enter Tesla. So I'm going to give you my best indicators, my best entry points for this stock because it's the number one thing traders need is an edge in the market. And that's what we're going to be dissecting right here is how do we know when to find bottoms? How do we know when to buy for calls or puts? So Tesla has been on a major run from 2019. So as you can see, this run has been 3,200% from the bottoms. So naturally, we come back and retrace that move 70% down. And this is something that can keep going lower. So we have to understand where the key levels are to see where we should be buying and where should we short it to. So the first thing I do is draw supply and demand. This is the number one trading strategy I found in the last year. It's the one that's helped me make the most money most recently. So all you have to do real quick supply and demand tutorial right here. You can also grab my $7 supply and demand course link below, which is going to help you fully understand this insane strategy. But all you do is you find the tops and bottoms in the market and you just mark the last candle. So there's the last candle for this bottom. And then we find the next one. This one's a little tricky because there's two bottoms, but I'm going to grab this bottom bottom candle there before the major run. And as you can see, we're literally inside this, what we call a demand zone. That's where the buyers are for Tesla. So I've been actually bullish on Tesla for the last 10 days, calling a little short-term rally, a little bounce inside our trading group. And that's what we're starting to see, mainly because we're in the demand zone. So if we start blowing through this, which is very possible, a lot of the big name stocks last year are down 99%. So a stock down 70% really has more room to fall compared to some other industries getting crushed. So where are we going to fall after that? So we have a slight bottom down here and I can mark that, but then there's a lot of action down here we could look for. So instead of marking the bottom, I don't think we're going to $24. Let's be honest. I'm going to mark the top of this because that is where we had resistance. So a zone can be created based off prior resistance, prior support buyers and sellers. We want to find key levels where there's going to be consistent reactions in the future. So I would say if we go through this 100 level, uh, 100 or 90 bucks, you know, we're falling to 60. And that's the worst case scenario down there. I, honestly, that would have 10%, 5% chance of happening depending on what happens this year. So now we know how to draw supply and demand. All we want to do is take reversals take the opposite move in that direction. So if we hit this zone, we want to see a bounce, which is what we'll likely see in Tesla over the next 30 days. And so that's why I'm getting bullish on this stock just in the short term. So that is what we do at the level. But the next thing is if we end up running on Tesla, where do we sell our position? So what I do now is I'm on the weekly chart. I'm going to scale down to the daily chart and the daily chart is going to give me a little bit more details to figure out where I could start taking profits on this play that is possibly going to start running very soon. So as you can see, this is a slick downtrend. I don't see any real bounces here that would tell me that's where I could take profit. That's where Tesla is going to sell off to a high degree. So if anything, you know, we could be heading right up to this last candle bottom here at 167. 
So on the daily chart, I don't see any places from 120 to 160 we would stop at. I scale down one more time frame to the four hour and I wanna see if I could spot any more key levels. And so here would be any severe bounces. Again, I don't see any severe bounces there. Uh, two hour chart, really, I don't see any severe bounces. So I would just start marking the levels we went super flat at. You know, I'd start taking profit there. I'd start taking profit here. But these aren't super bounceable levels. So there's a high chance we just blow through all those from trading sideways. So that's what I'd be doing if I got into Tesla at the bottom. You know, start taking profit at those levels. The next thing I do is I gain confirmation on direction and when direction starts flipping. So having directional indicators is key for getting in at the trend at the beginning and getting out of the trend at the top. Who doesn't want to enter the trend at the bottoms and the tops, the beginning and the ends? So two indicators I use to do that. And I will always use uh, faster time frames to nail these type of plays. So for example, Tesla on the daily and the weekly is bearish. So I have to scale into the hourlies or the, or the, the two, four, three hourly charts to see when that trend starts to change. So right here, is my first indicator. This is the market mover indicator. It comes for free with everyone who joins our trading group. But you can see, once we flip those yellow candles, that is a bullish trend starting. So that could be the beginning of a bottom for Tesla based off the market mover candles. Next up, I add the Ripster EMA cloud for further directional confirmation. And this, I like to play off the red to green cloud flip. So that's gonna be your slowest or your fastest cloud, cloud number two. Just those two things can help you gauge direction very easily trading. So right here for Tesla, we have a green cloud and a yellow candle. Let's show me some bullish direction. So nice bottom, nice bounce so far, and our hourly time frames are starting to flip. And if you're someone that likes to trade on faster time frames, you can even do this on the 15 minute. So look for those flips to happen a little bit earlier. You're going to get more of them. They're not going to be as profitable, but they can still help you as a trader. So here, green cloud flips, green cloud flips, and then we get this to run to start for Tesla. And you can see multiple times, you know, we came back, flipped it red, came back, flipped it red, and then went back up into the bull trend. So you had multiple times to get back in on this trend on the 15 minute chart. So now you know my technical entries with Tesla, you know, the indicators I like to use. We want to talk about Using indicators, how can we trade Tesla to help us make money and not blow up our accounts because it's the most volatile stock out there. And when it's the most volatile, the option chain is the most dangerous. So options decay every single day. It's great if you're selling them, which we'll talk about in a second. But if you're buying options for Tesla and you're holding them overnight, if you're holding them too long for zero days, you could see your account go down to zero very quickly. So that time decay is the most brutal for the stock for that reason. But the volatility aspect is the opportunity. Because they're so volatile, it makes it so easy for us to intraday trade them or swing them at the right moments. So that volatility can be the greatest thing and the worst thing for you. So we're gonna be talking about a couple things here. Spreads, iron condors, and iron butterflies. I'm gonna show you each scenario and why it's gonna be insanely profitable to use these on Tesla, especially this year when it's so volatile. So like we talked about earlier, that 120 level has been a level of previous support for Tesla, uh, around 120, 110, which is exactly where we hit with this previous demand zone. An awesome trick right here is you can use an indicator to plot these zones for you so you don't have to think about it. So it's kind of like supply and demand on training wheels. And this indicator is gonna be called support and resistance channels by the lonesome, the lonesome, the blue. <laughs> and they didn't nail this zone down here that I have. So that's why you have to level yourself up so you can not rely on automations like this um, and miss the, the really key levels that we wanna be trading at. But the, the key level again is going to be that zone we marked earlier. So if that zone is key 
instead of blowing up our accounts going long options, how do we play this safely? So first thing, I wanna to go to optionstrat.com. I use this just to analyze option spread plays, iron condors, it's, it's free. And we have the bull put spread. They have an over 90% win rate so far. So as, you're, as a trader, most people on the internet have a 60 to 70% win rate. The best traders in the world, you know, they're around that win rate. In the scalper traders, maybe they're 80%. But whenever you get to 90%, it's tough. And not many people have that high of a win rate. But when you add option selling strategies, that's how you can get there. So the goal is you want to survive in the markets long enough. And this is the best way to do it for beginning traders. If you can survive, you can thrive in the future. But surviving that initial learning curve is always very brutal for new traders. So now that we are on the bull put spread for Tesla, I just want to show you the risk to reward opportunity. So if right now Tesla stays bullish, stays over 120, we can go the full month of January for this bull put spread. We put the short contract indicated by the negative one at 120. So we short that contract and we go long 110. The difference between those, the price difference, is going to be your possible profit. So we see right here it's 385 bucks. So we can possibly make 385 and we're risking 600. So depending on how your brokerage needs the margin for this trade, you could be putting in a thousand bucks for the trade and you could make 40% on your thousand dollars. So a couple trades could double your account with option spreads. So a couple months of this, or even if you're, if you can navigate the markets in and out quickly, you can even trade these on the weekly time frame or just two weeks out. And this would be still, if you put in a thousand bucks, you could make 30% just two weeks out for it this Tesla bull put spread. So 30% return in two weeks is insane. This does not happen all the time with credit spreads, but this just means the stock's very volatile and can go the other way. So what happens if it does that? The volatility we can use to kind of pin the option. So it could go up, it could go down, and there's some option strategies we could use to take advantage of that. That's the iron condor and the iron butterfly. So let's show you some of those strategies on option strat just to show you how I would be trading Tesla in 2023. I love scalping it. I do that all the time in the trading group. We do it in the morning streams. But if I was somebody who was new to the markets and I didn't have the time to scalp every morning, this is what I would be doing. So next thing, I wanna to go to Iron Butterfly. This is again where you're shorting multiple contracts of Tesla and you wanna make sure you take advantage of time decay and you get the stock to stay within a certain price range. So let me just change here some of the factors, but you can see just two weeks out for Tesla, this iron butterfly, if we, and I'll even put up the chart, this chart makes it a little bit easier to see the price we need to stay between and where we hit our max profit. But you can see right here, 123, 123, we're shorting a call and we're shorting a put. So when you short, a call and a put, you have the ability to make like an iron condor, but when it's at the money, it's called an iron butterfly. But we're gonna go long the 128 and long the 118. This is just the first one it's showing me, but this is the game changer. So if you're able to pin Tesla at this exact price two weeks from now, you could risk $47 to make 453. It's the most insane risk to reward ratio out there. And this again is only if you pinned Tesla at this 118, 127 range. So if we hit the middle of it, we make the max profit. But if we are just $3 lower, we make half of that profit. So that's gonna be 200 bucks. Still, you risk 40 bucks to make 200. At one point, this becomes a one-to-one. -one, and it's only if you make 10% of your expected profit. So that would be if Tesla was above 119 or it's below 127. So if we stay between those prices, we make back our profit. It's a one-to-one -one trade. Anything above that is a two-to-one, three-to-one, four-to-one, five-to-one, even 10-to-one. So you could take, again, $1,000 <laughs> or $10,000 
you risk a thousand of that, but you're looking to make another 10K. So you could do some insane things not risking that much in this trade. So this is again a short, mostly short credit spread play. So you have a lot of short contracts with high premiums that are decaying. And I'll show you the chart view and we'll switch to the table here. And then over here, 3%. So you could be making like 3% a day premium collected. And if we even go to the weekly contracts, these percentages become, there's 3%. You're making 3% a day and it speeds up dramatically at the time of expiration. Contracts that are expiring the same day, so if you bought this trade in one day, you could see 50% return on your, your premium. So that's how much decay happens the very last day. So that's one way to trade Tesla in the recession, in this crazy volatile market, iron butterflies, and then lastly, iron condors, which are very popular. So this is where you wanna pin the stock, but you put your credit spreads further out of the money. So the credit spreads don't start, you don't short the, the price it's currently at, you short further away. So this lowers the amount of profit possible in the trade, has a worse risk to reward, but you have a higher chance of making money. You know, this section is locked for me. It would be shown if you were like a paid member on this service, but um, the, the strike prices are further apart, the short strikes are further apart. So you can see on the graph, your 100% potential profit is also further apart. You, you have a, a larger price range where you can hit your full profit. But the iron butterfly, you had to be at that exact price of expiration really to crush that full profit. So the iron condor you know, has a two to one risk to reward basically because you're stacking two credit spreads together. So before, you know, the credit spread would have been uh, 50 to like 150 risk to reward, so $150 loss to make a $50 profit. But you stack on another credit spread, which is what an iron condor is, and you can add that profit in, have the same max loss. So the max loss possible is the same, but you're adding more profit to the play. That's how the iron condor works. Let's just show you what that looks like on the chart so you can see what's possible. So 115 and then 131. So that is that rectangle we have to be in between. So if we're in between that, Iron Condor is good to go. Best part is this is a weekly, a weekly play. So you could double your money in six to seven days for this trade. If we did the 13th, you're only adding an extra $20 for your max profit. So it, for me, it doesn't make sense to add on more time because it leaves me more time to be wrong in the play, which is dangerous. Now that we talked about a great opportunity trading Tesla and the best ways to do it in 2023, I wanna talk about the bigger opportunity, the more exciting one, which is buying Tesla. How can we know when this stock is really hitting a bottom? And how can we know when this is ready to take off again? Because there are some things you need to be aware of before you start blindly buying Tesla and seeing it drop another 30 to 50% or more. Unfortunately, this company has a high P ratio and those stocks are getting sold off aggressively in this recession. So for that to change, there's a couple factors we need to watch. But this is the most exciting stock to see over the next 50 years if Elon can focus because they've already disrupted massive industries. The auto industry, solar, electricity, they're trying to monopolize energy at this point. So let's dive into Tesla and some of the stats here. So first things first, we've been talking about this for the last four or five years, but the PE ratio, the Schiller PE ratio for the S&P is at 28. And it was at 37 or 38 earlier this year. And this is a top we haven't seen since Black Tuesday, since the dot-com bubble. So we were well over Black Tuesday. We were close to the dot-com bubble, which means everything's overvalued in the stock market. And we're having a huge squeeze on valuations. So what's likely to happen is the rising interest rate, the high inflation environment is gonna keep squeezing high PE stocks until they get back down to reasonable levels. And then what's gonna happen is companies are gonna get squeezed out, a lot of them are gonna survive, and then eventually we're gonna drop the interest rates back down, and that's when growth stocks can really thrive again. 
But right now we still have, just in the stock market, like a 50% drop in PE ratios for the Schiller PE just to be at what is normal. So from 1880 to over here, let's say 1990, we'd spend majority of those 100 years inside 15. So 15 is like the average PE of a stock that is considered a value stock and one we want to own long term. But the innovation of technology and everything that is coming into the markets with genetics and uh, automobiles for EVs, all that stuff, all these new industries are creating more companies that have higher PEs. So the average P has been increasing aggressively since the internet was created. So we may never hang at the 15 level again, but we still have you know 30 to 40% overall P ratios should be dropping in my opinion. So that could lead again Tesla to drop 30 or 40% just because we're still super high and we're falling aggressively. Tesla's PE right now is 38. So compared to the overall Schiller index, we have 28. So even if Tesla had to fall to the overall market, you're still seeing a 30 to 40% drop just to catch up to the overall market. And that's not even considering the fact that the overall PE ratio of the stocks can still drop another 30 to 40%. So that is saying that maybe Tesla has another 50 to 70% to drop from here just based off PE. And while I may not agree with that technically, that's just a, from a valuation standpoint. And there's also other things that should squeeze Tesla, including the auto loan industry is gonna get hammered next year. So there's been a lot of studies on the internet showing this, a lot of big name people have been talking about this, including one guy on Twitter who apparently owns a multi-billion dollar auto loan company. And he's secretly disguised on Twitter as some dude that nobody knows, but he's been tweeting about the auto loan industry for five to 10 years, and he's calling for a major uh, drop and a, a major capitulation in this that could be devastating for a lot of companies. So what they're, what they're talking about is basically auto loans that were taken out last year. Many, many people got loans on cars that were in, at inflated prices. So what's gonna happen is if they go to get out of that loan, let's say they can't pay it, or they go to switch to a different car that's cheaper, their car value is gonna be down significantly. So for them to get out of the loan or just switch over cars, they're gonna be losing money or paying back the difference. So there's gonna be a flood of cars on the market because of that, which is gonna further drop the price. So before we saw the price of Tesla cars, you know, you could buy one, and then three months later, you could sell that used Tesla car for even more money. And that was producing this huge bubble in the auto loan industry and in the used car market. And now we're seeing the opposite. We're gonna see flooding of this market and people just really tanking the prices because of that. And this is gonna squeeze the pricing power of these companies like Tesla so they can't really charge what they're charging. They may have to drop the price. They may have to sell less cars. That could devalue the new cars coming out. So there's a lot of things that are gonna squeeze this company because of this auto loan problem. And the other thing I wanna talk about is that Apple in 2007 hit a top. So this is when the dot-com bubble burst. I'm looking at the same situation now for growth stocks. We'll call it a growth stock bubble bursting. A lot of these growth stocks that we looked at, all the Chamath stocks, all the ARC stocks, they're at 99% down. Some of these stocks won't be around in the next couple months. So we're looking at the bubble bursting and I look at stocks that survived like Apple. And so Apple took about two years to do that. And so that is what could happen with Tesla. Unfortunately, if we go to the Tesla chart, we haven't even hit a bottom. So when I say how high to the top, the top's up here at 400 for Tesla. And that was December, pretty much December last year. So we're one year. So if we wanna go back to it, you know, we could be there in another year. That's super optimistic. So two years is kind of, I would say the minimum. It could be four years to hit the top again. So that's something we have to understand when we start buying these stocks that are massively discounted is we have to be super patient. We can't have money in the markets that we need tomorrow. This recession is still in the middle and can get very, very ugly. We're seeing domino effects that are only gonna show their colors in the next three to six months. 
but there's a massive opportunity for traders out there because there's massive volatility. So if you know what to do and you know how to trade, this volatility can be great for you in the next 365. So subscribe and like if you want to learn more and take your trading to the next level this year. That's our goal is to help out traders all over the world survive and thrive in the next five to 10 years. If you want to watch a video to the right of me, I got it on Tesla and the other best ways to trade it using different option strategies. Peace out. Have a great day.